It actually people ask questions in person so that you can just get back from them a little feedback. I find that easier, but whatever. So I'm gonna make myself the other person. Oh wait, how do I do that? I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna make myself the co-host here. And then we'll get going. Um let's see, get rid of that. Grab this. Oh, I don't want to have this. All right, share screen. There we go. Cool. And here we go. So we have basically done Venn diagrams already. You just don't realize that. Um, we've been doing some things not unlike this, for instance, uh, blonde, uh, brown hair, black hair. Uh, what am I missing? Red hair. There you go, babe. And then, um, oh, I don't know, algebra two. Why math, Jay? I don't know. It's my life for the last 20 some years, okay? Uh, I don't know, calculus, cool, whatever. Wait, there's more blondes in calculus. They must be smarter. No, I don't know, dude. I don't know. So, whatever, let's just make up some numbers. I'm going to have them all end in zero because it makes your life easier for adding purposes. I don't care, though, other than it just, whatever. That's just weird. There's hardly any black haired people. I don't know. Whatever. A lot of redheads. Yeah, good for us. Whatever. Okay. And so I'm going to add down the columns real quick. That's 80. That's 110. 80. That's 150. And 70, 110, 140. Okay. And for the row marginals, there's 80 blondes. There's. Um, 150 brown hair, I think. 80 and 90. For a grand total, either way it should be same. So let's see, that'd be 250, 400 that way. 160, 310, 400 this way. Beautiful. Nice. It's like I know what I'm doing for once. Nice. And so someone might ask you, hey, what's the probability that a person is um, in Algebra 2? and um, you know blonde for instance okay so you're like well this is just like our pivot table so, yeah exactly so we're looking for both of these things that is 30 of them out of who oh, out of everybody okay so what i want you to see today is this there were two things here there were the case uh, well first of all there's everybody so when you make a venn diagram there's always going to be this box around it that's well everybody and that is what we call the sample space. Okay, there's the, all the possible combinations. Okay, there are nobody, there's nobody in our set of data up here, for instance, that was in pre algebra or Math 105 for that matter. Um, they were all in these three classes going across the top. Now, specifically, we're interested in Algebra 2, so we're going to draw a bubble for Algebra 2. And we're going to draw a bubble for Blonde. Now, it would be wrong to draw it this way. Because by drawing it this way, we have drawn them as if they are mutually exclusive. That means there is nobody that is blonde that's in algebra two. We know that they're not mutually exclusive. So because they are not mutually exclusive, that means that there's an overlap. <coughs> and because there's an overlap, we're gonna draw it like that. Okay, now, who is in the overlap? Well, we already answered that question. It's 30, right? That's the blondes that are in algebra two. Now, we know in algebra two, there's a total, you see, of 110 people in algebra two. Well, I've already accounted for 30 of them. That means the other 80 of them better be over here. That means they better not be blondes. Again, if you come back up here and look, 50 plus 20 plus 10 is 80. How about that? Okay. Now, what about the rest of the blondes? There was a total of 80 blondes. We've already accounted for 30 of them. The other 50 of them must be over here. So a rookie mistake is people will put 30 here and then they'll put 80 over here. That'd be counting the blondes that are in algebra two twice. You see everybody that's in this circle is a blonde, okay? Now, if you look at that, that's uh, 80 plus 80 is 160, yes? There's 160 so far accounted for the, between those two bubbles. That means the other 240 better be out here. 
And what are they? Well, they're not blonde and they're not in algebra two. And so when we make these Venn diagrams, in essence, when you look up here, allow me to demonstrate with a different colored pencil. And then kind of use your imagination a little bit. Uh, I need a different color, let's use red. Nice. So allow me to do this. Oh, nice. And this, oh, that's hot. Wait for it. One more pencil, please. Blue, oh, cool. Wait, don't answer yet. Ah, oh my. And right there, friends, you can see that is in essence the Venn diagram, right? In essence, those, a row and a column can be thought of as just two circles, okay, where they overlap one another, okay? Which brings up a couple of things. If you had a brown circle and a black circle, would they overlap each other? No, because they are, if you will, parallel lines, right? They can't overlap. So when a, if you were drawing a circle and you wanted to talk about what's the probability that you get a blonde, or well, yeah, I don't know, I guess I would have blonde, but blonde and, or brown, well, then you do blonde, and you do brown, and the two would not overlap. Why? Because there's nobody has brown and blonde hair, right? They are mutually, in this case, mutually exclusive, okay? And how would you draw that? Well, there's 80 and 150. I've already in, uh, just a minute, please. Not sure what's going on here. He is joining twice again. All right, cool, whatever. Okay, there it is. Now, is it still waiting? What happened? One moment, please. I swear I already admitted that person. All right, whatever. There it is. Now, uh, where do we go? So we're back to here. Okay. In the case of brown blondes, there was one day, I forgot, I lost my train of thought. There were 80 blondes and 150 brown hairs. That's a total of 230 total people already. That means the other 170 of them must be out here. They are neither blonde nor brown hair. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Because if you add up 80 and 90 right here, what do you get? The other two hair colors, well, that's 170. That's the rest of them, okay? So again, cannot stress this enough. What we're doing today with some Venn diagrams is what you've already done, okay? You've already done them in the terms of pivot tables. You're just looking at it from a different point of view right now. So it combines probability and logic. That's where the pivot tables kind of overlap one another, okay? The idea, or well, sorry, whether the uh, pivot tables and logic kind of overlap, if you will, in the case of a Venn diagram, okay? So I don't use a ton of Venn diagrams. When you take a logic course, you use a lot of them. So what I want you to see is, listen, pivot tables, Probability, that's where we've seen this before. It's the same thing, just kind of taken to a slightly different location, okay? Uh, let's do another one here. Oops, let's do this. I need my black pen back. I don't like writing in other colors. I know, I'm weird. All right, so strawberry. Uh, I don't know, apple. Uh, rhubarb, sure. Mm, pumpkin. Lemon meringue. There's a G in there somewhere. Cool. All right, nice. There we go. So some good pies. <coughs> Why you strawberry? It's kind of a weird pie. Uh, let's see here. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm, all the mode. Hmm. <coughs> non all mode, there you go. So with ice cream, not with ice cream. How about that? Cool. Kind of hard to have ice cream <coughs> and not ice cream at the same time, okay? So kind of weird. Uh, so maybe you're keeping track at the restaurant. Listen, literally nobody had ice cream on their lemon meringue pie. Why? Because it's weird, okay? Uh, normally, ice you can't hurt anything with ice cream. I'd put ice cream on a hot dog, but on a lemon meringue pie, it feels weird. So I'm not gonna do it, okay? Uh, the other 30 people that had lemon meringue pie just had it plain. Cool. Pumpkin, yeah, I don't mind a little ice cream on pumpkin pie, but maybe 10 and 20. Rhubarb, literally, 
one weirdo. No, I don't want to do one. It's too hard to add. I'll do 10. Okay. Uh, 60. 20. Mm, this is like a strawberry parfait. Mm, I don't know. Sure. Why not? Cool. So again, just add them up here. Look at that. Look at me go. 30. 30. Nice. And then down the columns would be 150. Oh boy, oh boy, 110, 20, 130, should be 280, is that right? 160, 220, 250, 280, yes, that's awesome, okay? Again, completely uh, mutual exclusive, obviously on the ice creams, okay? Perhaps there's a rule, um, this store, this, this, this pie shop has a rule, you can get one kind of pie person, move along, you can't have strawberry and apple, go away. Okay, obviously this wouldn't work for me at Thanksgiving because I want some of each, but let's just pretend for a minute, okay? So in this situation here, now, and by the way, we'll talk about that in a minute. We'll, we'll take this to a different level in just a minute because in reality, there's no reason why I can't have a piece of apple and a piece of rhubarb bowl, okay? But we're gonna stick with just the rows and the columns. I think if you think about that for a minute, you realize that, that uh, if you're going to have mutually exclusives, then a row, a true row situation isn't going to work. Okay, I think everyone realizes that, that, that uh, if this is going to be a true mutually ex or non-mutually exclusive thing where you can have different kinds of pies, heck, you could have all five or six kinds of pie, or whatever it is, um, then obviously the, the concept of a pivot table where you have rows and columns isn't going to work. So this is just kind of where I start from, and then we're going to launch out from there and do something different. Okay. So in this case here, let's ask, what's the probability that we get someone gets a rhubarb uh, all the mode? Yeah, I don't know, I can't spell. Or pumpkin, uh, <coughs> excuse me, not all the mode. You would think with the rain, I would have less allergy issues, but apparently not today. So it looks like everybody is in my hat. So 280, obviously there. So I want rhubarb a la mode, so that's 50, yes. Or I want pumpkin with uh, the non a la mode, which would be there. So it looks like 70 out of 280. And you're like, I don't need a Venn diagram for this. No, but I'm gonna make one anyways, okay? So here we go, here's everybody, okay? So clearly I'm talking about rhubarb and a la mode. So those two, <laughs> Better overlap. If they didn't overlap, by the way, <coughs> there would be zero chance of it happening, right? Because I want a rhubarb. It's obviously implied that I want and all the mode. Okay, I'm not just having just ice cream. I want rhubarb pie and ice cream on it. So I need those two circles to overlap. And I also need two more circles pumpkin, non all the mode. Okay, so in here, I think it's pretty clear that we have 50 here and 20 here. Let's finish filling in what we know. How many rhubarb pies were there? Was it a total of 60? So 50 are in this bit, there's 10 there. That's a total of 60. How many all the modes were there total? Well, there was 130. I've accounted for 50 so far, so the other 80 better be here. Pumpkins, there were 30 total, so there must be another 10 here. And non all the modes were 150. I've accounted for 20 of them, so 130 would be here, okay? Now, interestingly enough, there's a little bit of an issue the way I've drawn it, okay? That means obviously there's zero out here, right? Everybody had some kind of, some kind of dessert in this case. But there's a little bit of an issue because if you are, <laughs> If you are eating pie and you either had ice cream or you didn't have ice cream, that means these people here had what? They had no, oh, they were non all the mode. Interesting. So those 10 right here would be included where? In this 130. Meaning that this bubble here somehow has to intercept this bubble over here. Okay? Oh, weird. Exactly. And then wait a minute. So these pumpkin pie, these 10 pumpkin pie people, yeah, they had ice cream too, didn't they? Okay. So that isn't quite the right drawing. This is where the logic piece of it comes in, okay? So logic is everywhere. I mean, that's just it's obviously a fact. Logic is everywhere 
And so we, we use it and we always use it in math. So it's just a matter of, you know, seeing that, hey, this can't be right the way I've drawn it. I have to change things up a little bit. So I need to get all the mode and this one pumpkin to overlap. And I need to have 10 of them in there, yes? Okay. Now, hold on to your thoughts for a minute. Here is the rhubarb. And there's, we know there's 50 of them in there, obviously. Okay. And uh, let me see here, where are we at? And then, um, Where's my other circle at? Oh, it's over here. All right, so let's do this. This is non all mode. A. Still got zero out here. That didn't change. So the non all the modes total is 130, yes? Now, how many rhubarbs were non all the modes? Were 10 of them, yes? Meaning the other 120 of them better be here. Does that add up to 180 like it's supposed to? Or wait, 150 like it's supposed to? Let's back the train up. So let's look at our non all the modes. Okay. We've accounted for <coughs> good grief. 20 of them here and 10 of them here. That means we should have 120 left over. Oh, that's what I did. I count something funny. What's going on here? Nope. There's my problem. We got to look at the pumpkin non all the modes. That's one I forgot. The pumpkin non all the modes is 20. I, that's where my mistake happened right there. Sorry. Let's back this off a little bit. So let's talk about the non all the modes. They're supposed to be, <coughs> good grief when they die, They're supposed to be a total of 120 non all the modes. Is that right? Okay, that's what's supposed to be. So let's go back up here and look. So we've got 10 here and we've got 20 here. That's a total, I'm sorry, 150. I can't count. So we get 10 here and 20 here. That's a total of 30, yes? That means the other 120 of them are right here. Notice that they are non all the modes, but they didn't get rhubarb and they didn't get pumpkin. So they might've gotten apple or lemon meringue or something else. Does that make sense? Okay. But they are not rhubarb and they are not pumpkin. Okay. Notice that if you get pumpkin pie, there was two choices. Either you got ice cream or you didn't. That means there's a big fat zero in here. Okay. I mean, what are you going to have on it? Uh, mustard or something? That doesn't make sense. So it's ice cream or no ice cream. There's only two options. Same thing with the rhubarb. So there's going to be zero here. Nobody ordered it with, uh, you know, I don't know, ketchup. It's weird. Okay, so, but can you get all the mode that is with ice cream with other than pumpkin or rhubarb? Yeah, of course you can. And so up here, you've got the 50 and the 10 accounted for, yes? That leaves us another 70 that's going to be out in here. Okay. Now, are some of these a little trickier than others? Uh, yeah. And so notice that we're interested in, which problem did we just do? We were interested in these 50 and these 20, right? 70 out of a total of um, 400 or 280 pumpkin pie, or 270 out of 280 people that got dessert. Good grief, I can't talk this morning, okay? So again, these particular ones, the pumpkin and the rhubarb can't overlap, okay? In this case, we're not having both, okay? And these two, are not overlapping. They are mutually exclusive. However, this is not mutually exclusive with ice cream or non-ice cream. And that's also true for the kind of pie you eat. Okay, it's gonna be, you know, back and forth. Okay. Um, let's see here. Ooh, cool. So we could talk about kinds of music. Kind of music. Okay. And uh, I don't know, there was, so this is, this is your music collection. Uh, I'm sorry, not your music, the people's music collection. You ask them, hey, listen, on your iPod or whatever, what do you have? So 20 people said, listen, only rap, man, only rap. That's all I got, baby. Oh, okay. 30 people, that's country, that's all I got. 10 people, classic, only like Beethoven and so forth. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. There were 15 people that said, listen, I got a little rap and country. Interesting. There were uh, 20 people who said they had uh, country and classic. Uh, some people was like, Jay, you forgot rap and classic. I haven't got there yet. 
do they does there have to be anyone that has both of those there does not have to be and if there wasn't we would say they're mutually exclusive there would be no overlap between them all right and maybe there is maybe there isn't this time i'm going to say there is wrap and classic by the way there are three kinds of music what is three choose two we've done this before three choose two is three there's three ways that you can take two of them so this comes back to our idea of combinations as well we talked about earlier okay uh what is three choose one three choose one geez that's three that's right one two three there they are that doesn't mean they all have to be accounted for but there are that many ways to choose them and then of course what could happen you have like five people that have all and by the way, that doesn't necessarily have to be true. It could be a situation where nobody has all three. Huh, weird. But if you did this, and if these were music lovers, well, maybe let's do this. And there were 10 people that had, what's an iPod, man? What's music? Or something to this effect. In other words, they have no music at all. Or you could think of, well, that could be a situation. Or they could say, like, um, I like uh, techno. 90s blah blah yada 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 uh okay it's funny this guy i know he uh oh geez he's got to be almost 70 years old now i met them a long time ago he used to work with his wife and he farms out he has a little farm out here and i've gone out and worked on his little farm and stuff helped him out and stuff one day i show up at his house and he's listening to some kind of weird techno stuff from the 90s i'm like what are you what are you doing he's like oh it's my favorite music man i'm like oh, okay he kind of weirded me out not maybe I don't know. It, I think if he'd have been listening to rap, it would have been less weird to me. Just it was just a very odd scene to see. <laughs> I don't know, man. Whatever. But let's just say that we have this going on here. Now, with that, with these ten people out here, they'd be other, if you will, right? So these would be others. I don't care what you want to call it. They're just they're not country. They're not classic, and they're not rap. So when I look at this here, there's 20 rap only people. Well, 20 rap onlys, uh, this is what rap only would be. You're just in a circle and no overlap between them, okay? 30 in the country only and 10 in the classic only, okay? 15 in the rap and country, 20 in the country and the classic, and 10 in the rap and classic, and five in all three. And that, my friends, is how you'd set that that thing up. Now, the, then the question is, well, what are you going to do with it? Well, here's the deal. If I asked you without this picture, if you didn't see the picture, get the picture. Let me hide the picture. Oh, crap. I can't hide the picture. Let's do this. <laughs> oh, darn you. Oh, sh this is harder than it looks, people. There you go. For God's sakes, copy it. Oh, there's got to be an easier way to do that. Here we go. Control C. <coughs> there we go. Okay. <coughs> what is the probability that I reach in and I select someone who likes country? Notice that I didn't say country only. I said country. Okay. Here's my question. How do you find it from this information right here? Okay. I'll let you weigh in. Go ahead. How would you find the answer to this based on this gobbledygook off to the side over here without a picture? Go ahead. Anyone. Jump in. Go ahead and unmute yourselves. Take your time. Oh, for the love of Pete. There you go. <coughs> anyone? 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 No? Do I need to call on people? Kia, what do you think? Oh, goodness. Um, add all of the numbers together. And where would you do that number? You'd put it in the total, the part where it says total. 
No, I just want to know the probability. So if I'm putting a probability, if I added them all up, I'd probably put in the denominator, right? Right, right. All right, let's do that. 60, 80, 90, 100, 520, I think. Okay, so how many people like country? Go ahead, anyone, anyone, anyone. Six, 65 have some sort of country in their playlist. Beautiful, okay. Now that's fine, but what's easier I think to see is when you have the Venn diagram, okay? So you come back to the Venn diagram over here. Again, you add it up, and there's 120 of them, that's for sure, okay? But when you come through this whole mess up here, it's pretty easy to see it from the Venn diagram. Look at all of these people. So it's 50, 65. Oops, did you forget to add somebody there? Oh, you forgot these spellers, didn't you? Right? Because 70 have all three, right? Or five have all three. So that's why I kind of like the Venn diagram when you're given a list of garbage like this where there's a lot of gobbledygook and over the overlapping. I like it from the standpoint of making sure that I don't count somebody twice, I don't leave somebody out. I'm looking for these 70 people out of what? Well, out of 120 of them, okay? That's where this kind of shines. Also in a problem like this, what's the probability the person likes classical given that they like country? Oh, nice. So this is out of who? Out of who? Who's our who's our who's in our hat this time, if you will? Who would we filter it by if we were doing a uh, if we we're doing a pivot table? The seventy that have country in there. Nice. So seventy would be my denominator. Beautiful. And then how many of those seventy like classical? Twenty-five. <clears throat> Twenty-five. Nice, and that's it, you're done, okay? That'd be really hard to pull off, not impossible, but kind of hard to pull off over here, just looking at this data and going, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you see the Venn diagram, it's pretty straightforward. Listen, I'm only interested in this circle. In this circle, how many of them are also in this circle? That's what it's asking for. If you recall, this thing right here, the probability of classical given country, we write it like this, the probability of classical and country over the probability of country. That is how that is actually done. And that is exactly what you found up here. You found there's 70 people in country, that's my denominator, 70, what did I say, 70, yeah. And then uh, in that circle, there's an overlap of 25 that, fit in, that are classic and country. Nice. So as I say, you've done this before. It's not like it's brand new. Um, it is just a, another way of looking at it, but it starts to bring logic into play as well, okay? And so in logic classes, they'll talk a lot with Venn diagrams. That's just how they approach it. And note that it's not a whole lot different than what we did before with um, pivot tables, if, there's not, if they're mutually exclusive. In this case, wrap country, classical apparently according to this data that i just made up are not mutually exclusive there's an overlap okay and so because there's an overlap it's really hard to do it with just columns and rows okay so it's gonna that's why it's very easy and nicer to visualize when there is a venn diagram going on okay mm, so let's do this one here. um mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh good good so the people, these people can be, they can be strictly vegan, they could be vegetarian, or they can be omnivores. Yeah, meat eaters too. They eat meat and veggies, I guess. And then, um, yeah, I don't know. So this is kind of pizza that they might order. So pepperoni. Like, geez, Jay, that'd be zero and zero. I know. Uh, veget vegetable, veget veget vegetarian, cool. So, you know, maybe there's 20, let's make it a little bigger, 80 people that buy that. And here, you know, I like a vegetarian pizza every now and again, zero, okay. Uh, the 
some kind of vegan pizza. I don't know what the difference is because I really don't pay attention. I just, I just not my thing. I don't know. So let's say 50, but there's a few of these people eat that. And this guy's on a date, so he hates that too. And okay. And then I don't know, whatever. So maybe those are the kind of pizzas that we have here. Um, cool. I guess as the, these are the only three things that we can eat there. And these are the only kind of thing. Apparently those are the only kind of pizzas that were ordered. I don't know. Uh, in this situation, then again, this is very similar to a pivot table. So I'm just going to write like this, um, 50, 100, 80, uh, 80, 100, 50, 230 for a total. So what's the probability that you get a, that a vegetarian, that a vegan, you get a per that you reach into the hat and you draw a person that's a vegan that ordered pepperoni? pepperoni and you're like well it's zero obviously of course it's zero why is that well because when you made their circles vegan pepperoni and neither of the two should meet so there's nobody in their intersection okay so another thing that i want to kind of mention is this i prefer to use vegan i prefer the word and Okay, that is the way I like to think of it. That's when, I, when I'm talking to someone about probability or events happening, whether I say it, the word and, or I imply it, and is how I think about it in my daily life. And that's how you think about it in your daily life too. Listen, the, the guy that I'm interested in, uh, the, on the match.com website, you're like looking at it, you're like checking it, Jay, all right, Jay, check it out. This is, I gotta have a, have a black hair and he's gotta be, you know, 5'10 or taller. Okay, good for you. So you've made your selections, but this guy is five nine, but he you know fits the rest of your bill. Sorry, five ten or okay, weird up, whatever. You you do a lot of ands in our daily lives. Okay, it must be this and it must be this. Or I'm not going to be happy. Oh, okay. We do a lot of ors in our daily life. So the probability that you get a vegan person, a vegan or pepperoni. Okay, and and so or you'd be happy with either one. Right? We do a lot of this in our daily lives, okay? Um, you know, you, do you want a rhubarb pie or a uh, apple pie? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, either one is fine. I'd be happy either way. Um, matter of fact, I'm not sure I've ever met a pie I didn't like. I've made some pies that were not made well, but in general, you can't really hurt a pie too bad. Uh, we do a lot of that, okay? Now, in logic, we do a little bit differently. So we would say vegan intersect pepperoni okay and the idea here is this means this guy right here means intersect and it's the idea of where two groups if you will overlap one another where do these guys overlap they don't they don't and so the answer here would be zero okay so in logic instead of using the word and we use a lot of what's what's called group symbols or symbols uh for this grouping and uh and so one thing or set logic uh we use what's called the intersect for to mean and okay and so the idea would be from a venn diagram where do these two circles overlap or where do they intersect they don't so zero would be the answer okay now if it was vegan or pepperoni well we know we'd be happy with however much is in this group we'd be happy with whatever's in this group we'd be happy with both of them so in the case of vegan pizza or pepperoni pizza It'd be 50 plus 80, so 130 of them out of 230. That we'd be very happy with that. We didn't have to have them overlap. We just said we'd be happy with this group or with this group, so add them together. Well, this is referred to in set logic as what we call a union. Okay, so in this case, again, it's 130 out of 230. And so this is why I think a Venn diagram is helpful. Uh, you, obviously, with the intersection, there is no intersection here. In the case of a union, it would be whatever's in this group plus whatever's in this group, okay? And so this is another reason why I like to teach them, uh, because going forward, you will run into people who teach probability with only set logic representations, which is okay, I guess, but the general, the general purpose person on the street doesn't do that. I, hey, I want this, intersect that. You're like, what? No, I want this and this. Oh, okay, I can do that. I don't know what intersect means. It doesn't grab me. So I think once you get a better feel for probability, then coming back and learning the set logic makes a lot more sense, I think, personally. Okay. I'm um, going to come back to this page over here real quick to my, this one, yeah, here we go. 
So I'm going to ask this question. What's the probability I get a person who likes rap or classical? Rap or classical. Okay. Now, this is an or situation, yes? Meaning I want the union of rap and classical. So what do we say? There was how many people in this thing total? I forgot. Hundred and I forgot where did I write it down. I wrote it down somewhere, didn't I? 120. I know I could have added them again. So there's 120. I'll do the hard part. That's the denominator. How many of them like rap or classical? Now be careful. On the previous page, we had two circles that were mutually exclusive right so we added what was in this circle plus what was in this circle sometimes mutually exclusive can also mean disjoint that means they don't overlap one another okay that's how in again in set logic they will use that terminology does it mean any, does it it doesn't uh mean anything else it's just what the big kids say when they say in set theory we use the word disjoint rather than mutually exclusive yeah whatever works so Here's what I need. I need to know how many people are total in this circle and this circle, total, okay? Now you can do it a couple of ways. You could add up every single little piece. Don't notice that we're not gonna add the 10 twice. We're gonna add them just one time. So it's 20 plus 30 plus 15 plus five plus 20 plus 10. That's one way to do it. Or the lazy man's way, which is me, there's 40 people that are not in the group. Does that make sense? So that means the rest of them, the other 80, must be in rap and, or in the classical one. Okay. Some people, by the way, get all hung up on this. They're like, but Jay, these people are in both. Yeah, it doesn't matter. If if you said, listen, the guy, you know, must make more than 50 grand a year, or he must be, I don't know, six, six or taller or something. That's what your match.com things are. Apparently, you don't need both. If you got both, you'd be pretty happy, I'm guessing. But if you only got one, you're like, eh, I'm pretty happy with that because I wanted this or that. And so there you go. If you meant it must be both, then you would have said he must be 6'6 six, six and make more than 50 grand a year. And so you would have said that. You didn't say that. You said or. And so, you know, like, I want this or that. I'd be happy with any, either one of them. Now, I had a kid last, last time I taught this class, they were like, but I wouldn't be happy if they were there or both. I'm like, really? You wouldn't be? I feel like that would be like, like the, can the, 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 the ice cream on top of the pie. I feel like that you'd be really happy with that. So you'd be happy with ice cream. You'd be happy with pie. I think you'd be really happy if you got both. Okay. So, or is that connotation that I want to be in one of these circles? It doesn't mean I can't be in both. Okay. In fact, maybe that's when you're the happy ass is when you're in both. I don't know. But there it is. That is why Venn diagrams are pretty cool. All right. And I think Venn diagrams help sell the bit of whether it's a union or whether it's an intersection because you can actually see where they overlap one another, okay? Uh, versus, again, here it is, the probability of the rap uh, and classical. It is where those two circles intersect one another, rap, intersect classical. And so, of course, it's again 120 on the bottom. But how many are of these people up here are in both? How many of these two? How many of these people are in both this circle and this circle? It's like 15, right? But what about those five that are in country? I don't care. We, we didn't. We didn't ask about country. Okay, we didn't ask about that. If you, by the way, then if that that would be a situation like you go on Match.com, you're doing your thing. Must be six six or taller. Must be 50 grand or more. If you were really particular that they must not have like a blue eye and a green eye, okay, you know, whatever, that, whatever, you're weird that way, then you would have said, but must not have this, okay? So those five people might have, you know, oddly colored eyeballs that you didn't want, okay? If you were specific about that, you would have said that. And in fact, we can actually do that. Probability of rap and classic, but not country in fact this is actually something that happens from time to time you will say this come on minus the probability or my well 
me write minus uh, wrap intersect classical intersect country. Okay. And in fact, in set theory, they'll go on and talk about, you know, how this, this right here is very similar to back in the day when you were in, a, let's say, a young math class and you saw something like five times, I don't know, five plus two times three plus four plus five or something. The order of operations says you multiply first, right? Oh, but Mr. So-and-so said you got to put parentheses here and here. So what do you do first? We well, do this part here first. And then you do this part here, second, right? Or this could have been a subtraction, whatever. It doesn't matter. The idea being is, is that order of operations changes things, yes, when you use the parentheses. That would be a similar deal here. So what we're going to do is we're going to find wrap and classical, which I think I said was uh, 15. There was 15 of them that fit both the bills there, but not this. Well, this is where all three of them overlap. So that's this guy right here, those five. five minus, 15 minus five is 10, again, out of 120. So now there's 10 out of 120. That is, you want rap and classical, but you can't have country. For whatever reason, country gives you the hive or something. So I want the, the intersection of these two, but not the third intersection piece, okay? So we're not gonna do a ton of that in this class but I wanna set you up because depending on who you get for 243, um, if you're taking stats 243, which a lot of people do after this class, you will run into teachers who do not, who only teach it with set theory. And it doesn't make a lot of sense, I don't think, to the average person, unless you come up here and you look at a Venn diagram and you're actually, you know, walk through it step by step by step slowly at first, okay? Um, that's just it, that's what we do. We do this kind of stuff all the time. We, we have these extra preconditions. That's all that is, okay? It's no different than, as I say, the match.com one, a friend of mine back in the day was showing me that like before he, when he, when it, it was like when it first came out. I'm like, wait, what? You just go in there and just select a bunch of stuff? I'm like, he goes, yeah, yeah, check this out. You can do this. I'm like, and then I said, so but if you got really particular that there would be no person that would meet your description, right? And he's like, well, yeah. And so you think about all the different things that a person can choose from in there, select or whatever. And maybe you're not particular about hair color other than maybe you don't want uh, uh, no bald guys. All right, whatever. So you go through and select on that or whatever, and, and then down the line. And then so what you'd be saying is, are you okay with blonde or brunette, you know, or brunette or, or black or red or whatever, or gray, but not bald. Okay, whatever. So those would be all mutually exclusive sets. All right. And then, um, and then you'd just be, but then you subtract off the other, just, you wouldn't have a bubble for the other one. And then you would have, you know, maybe you check income because you guys are going to make a lot of money or whatever it is. Okay. And you just go down and select all your stuff on the list. Must be this height, must be here, must be there, must be there. Eventually, if you put enough different bubbles on there, you're going to find that somewhere they're not going to overlap. Okay. And so when someone would say something like this, uh, taller, let's say I'm, so you're going there to pick out a lady. You're, Taller than, than uh, all right, five foot ten. Well, that's going to be, you've greatly restricted the population by now, just right off the bat. But okay, good for you. Um, income, mm, greater than, uh, greater than or equal to, no, I don't know, let's don't go big, just 50 grand, I guess. I mean, just kind of medium, whatever. Let's don't, I don't make her a millionaire, for God's sake. Let's don't extract everybody out of the system at this point. Um, you know, must like horses, whatever, um, yeah, red or black hair, okay, that's weird, and so forth and so on and so forth, uh, vegetarian, and so on and so on. If you were to draw out a circle, I mean, to draw out a Venn diagram, there might be a zillion women in here, right, that are on Match.com, but right off the bat, you've got taller than 5'10", so you got height here, greater than five foot 10, all right? And there may not be a whole lot of women in here, you know, numbers wise, there might be a couple hundred of them at, out of, you know, of the whole system or whatever. You're like, okay, cool. And then when you do incomes, greater than 50,000, you know, there might be still 40 women in here or something. I don't know, whatever, good for you. 
And then, now this is where it gets hard to draw. So I'm gonna kind of just kind of draw it like this. I'm just gonna start kind of drawing ellipses because after a while when you start drawing them, they have to be kind of oddly shaped, okay? There still might be five women in here, okay? That meet that bill. For This is for horses, I guess, sure, okay? Now, as soon as you say red or black hair, of those five women, is it quite possible that none of those five women have red or black hair? It's very possible. And in fact, that next, bubbles here, you might have a situation where like red hair kind of encompasses this, let's say, and maybe black hair maybe kind of encompasses this. At this point, there is no place where you have um, height, I'll just do our height requirement here, uh, intersect horses, intersect income, intersect hair, intersect vegetarian. In other words, there is no place where they all intersect. So the probability of getting all of that would be zero out of, doesn't matter, it'd just be zero because there's no place where they all intersect. So that's it's just a pretty neat, that's another way of looking at it in terms of when you're doing this. Um, I think it's pretty, pretty obvious to most people, the more picky you get, the less chance of finding what you're looking for or getting what you wanted, okay? The more picky, the less picky you are, like a teenage boy, what do you want for dinner? Would you eat this, 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 or that? Yeah, okay, sure. Uh, I think if you're planning a, any of you're planning a picnic or a dinner or a, a get together for teenage boys, it's gotta be the easiest thing in the world to plan for as far as what to serve, because if you put food on the table, it, they will eat it. Um, if you're trying to, Feed people like my aunt. Oh, that's a bad, I always use my aunt. It's kind of a bad description because she doesn't eat much except uh, kale and quinoa, as far as I know. That's what my mom said and she lived with her for a few years. I'm, they, she lived with my mom and dad. And I guess that's not bad if all you want is kale and quinoa. I mean, I guess that's a fairly easy one. But if you want someone who's, you know, they're allergic to this, they have this problem, da, da, da. No, that makes me ill. I don't care for that, you know, whatever. It's a little trickier to plan for that person, okay? But for the person, it's just a very much a, an or sort of a person, yeah, I'll take that, or this, or that. It's a lot more chances because they don't have to intersect. It's just this bubble plus this bubble plus this bubble plus this bubble. And that's what we've talked about in the past, okay? So that's Venn diagrams. That's what I've given you here is way more than what the book covers. Um, and that's kind of the problem that I will give you next week. There's going to be, the review is gonna come out. The final test is an awful lot like the review. Um, I'll probably have you make a Venn diagram and I will give you a Venn diagram and ask you a question about it. That's the extent of them. I'm not gonna go nuts on, on the Venn diagram on the test at all, okay? Um, as far as the simulation project goes, by the end, let's say by Thursday of this week, I would like to have, if you were one of the three people who told me that you can't generate your own data, um, you need to get me your information. You need to get me your info so that I can help you simulate, okay? So if you are, let's say, um, probability that you work today, so work or not work, if this was your thing, was, and you can't use this one if I'm doing this one, so you can't use this one now. I mean, you can use one of these, but not all of them. Let's say it's 70, 30 on any day of the, any day of the week you're on call, you get called in 70% of the time, whatever. Um, so if you work, then obviously, um, so let, um, let's see what would be a good one. So if I work, that depends on, that, that affects how much homework I get done, homework get done. So how much homework I will get done given that I work, or probability my homework gets done, might be 10%. Um, or homework not done, given that you work, might be something like 90%, I don't know. Then of course your homework, you know, getting done, given that you don't work, might be 70% and homework not done. Of course, in the case of these, there's only two things, so it obviously better add up to 100%. Okay, if there was three things like homework kind of done, some done, whatever, then obviously those three would have to add up to 100%. And then of course, what comes after the homework? I don't know, the time you go to bed, 
go to bed given homework status or something. I don't care, it doesn't matter to me. And then I need to have all this information so that I can simulate the data for you, okay? And just make sure that you account for it. If there were two outcomes here, there's gonna be two sets of outcomes here. Now, in this case, there were two outcomes, but it could have been homework kind of done, homework kind of done. And then maybe this first one was 10%, and then this one was 10%, and so forth. So if there was three choices here, there would have to be three choices here as well. Remember, two times three is six total outcomes at this point. And then if there was three here, then there's gonna be three groups of things over here. So it was either somewhat done, not done, or you know done. And then you know go to bed, I guess it could be on time or late. Go to bed late or go to bed on you know go to bed early i don't know whatever it could be whatever okay and then you're gonna have to have probabilities for each of those things so if there was three here three times three is nine times two is 18 you have 18 total events and in this case what might it affect it might affect well if i go to bed early on time or late that might affect when i get up in the morning it might affect how i feel in the morning rested wise or unrested or whatever it is a variety of things Whatever your deal is, I, and if you're one of the three people that could not do the simulation with the Excel add-on that I showed you, then you need to get this to me by Thursday. I am not gonna spend all weekend crunching these numbers. I wanna be able to just bust it out, ship it right back to you so you can finish the problem, okay? Uh, I have not heard from anybody yet on, in terms of what they wanna do. So I wanna know by, by Thursday for all of you, preferably sooner, in an email, this is what I'm doing, okay? I am going to simulate, and here's my three things. In this case, it's whether I work, affects how much homework gets done, affects when I go to bed, uh, and then together that might, it might, it might affect my feeling in the morning. And so the idea is you are gonna be predicting for any given day of the week how you're gonna feel today you know, wake up feeling rested or not rested or whatever it is, okay? For instance, the one I showed you in class the other day was uh, late or not late. It could be a variety of things like that, okay? So what's probably that I wake up feeling good on any given day, all right? Obviously, that's not, um, that isn't the only thing that affects whether I feel good when I wake up or not, that I, you know, that I feel rested, I guess. Maybe it's more like feel rested. It's probably you feel rested in the morning. Um, obviously that's going to be based a lot on when you go to bed, not a hundred percent, but a lot of it. And so there it is. I need that spelled out because I don't want you to do is I don't want to, you to waste a lot of time dinking around with something that isn't right. Remember they have to affect one another. Okay. So I don't want to be something like, well, whether I work or not affects my boss's, you know, maybe my boss's mood or something or whatever. Well, whether you're at work or not may or may not affect your boss and move that just feels weird. Um, how much homework you have to do, whether you do it or not, is not affected by whether you work or not. You know, I mean, I could pile the homework on, you're gonna do it or you're not gonna do it, but it has no, no effect on whether you're working or not, okay? I mean, you, whether you work or not has no effect on whether I assign homework or not. I'm gonna assign homework independent of that, okay? So someone said that to me once before in another class, and I said, well, no, it's kind of independent, and they, they didn't really get that. I assign homework because I need to assign homework. I don't assign homework based on the fact that, you know, Ross worked today or not, okay? Ooh, Ross worked. I can't assign homework to anybody. That's weird. Um, so, so that is independent. Now, whether you do the homework or not is dependent maybe on whether you have time because you had to work today or not, okay? So by Thursday, I'd like to see that from everybody, and again, I guess if I'm if I'm one of the people that does not have this Excel thing, maybe let me know by like say Wednesday or Tuesday. This is what I'm thinking, and I can say no, not quite, or yeah, that sounds good. And then I'll give you more time to work on getting the actual numbers to me. If you're doing your own, you don't need to send me the numbers. Just kind of how the plan goes. This affects this. This affects this. This affects this, and this affects the fourth thing. Remember, watch the video from last week or week before, whenever week it was. And go back and watch that video and see, remember we are gonna simulate actual three things, then we're gonna use a pivot table, and then we're gonna go through and estimate for the fourth thing. In reality, 
I could just estimate the fourth thing and then a fifth thing and a sixth thing and just keep going forever. I could just keep going forever. If I'm late for work, all right, cool. Now what's probably the boss yells at me. All right, cool. Then what happens after that? You know, I go get drunk or whatever it is. Okay. There's really no end to that. So we're arbitrarily saying three things affect the fourth thing. And I want it worked out kind of like I did last week in last week's video. I think it was last week's. So. Questions on that at all? Yes, no, maybe so. No one's talking. It looks weird because I'm holding this lap in my lap, but the camera's on my other side over here. That's awkward. I can't do that. No questions? None? Okie dokie. Uh, we'll have office hours Tuesday at noon. So if you want to come on on Tuesday at noon, that'd be cool. You, know, you were going to say something, James? Um, no, I'll stop in because I know I, I struggle with the uh, probability quiz. So I'll definitely. Um, do that on Tuesday. All right. All right. Sounds good. All righty. Well, question queue. Just said thank you. Oh, all righty. Take care. Have a nice day.